गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू टेल यू अबाउट किस ऑफ लॉस सो दीज आर यू मस्ट हैव स्टार्ट फॉर द टाइमिंग सीरीज एंड पैरल सर्किट बट दीज लॉज आर मोर इंपॉर्टेंट दे आर वेरी 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 इंपॉर्टेंट इन सॉल्विंग कॉम्प्लेक्स सर्किट्स सो देर आर टू लॉज You have also studied Kirchhoff laws in class eleventh in the chapter heat and thermodynamics, but this is now based on current. You have studied in class eleventh that was based on heat, but now it is based on current. So there are two Kirchhoff laws. First of them is known as a current law or a junction law. A current law or a junction law. The second one is. the voltage law or the loop law the voltage law or the loop law now let us start with the junction law first of all so junction law what is a junction so a junction is that point in a circuit where many wires meet say for example this is some p point this is the junction there are different wires coming one wire comes from this side it may carry a current i1 then another wire which may carry a current i2 let us say now if you look very carefully i1 and i2 are coming near the junction they are meeting at a junction let us suppose there is another wire through which current i3 leaves the junction So I one and I two are entering the junction. I three is leaving the junction. Now, according to junction law, according to junction law, please listen carefully. It is very very important. According to junction law, the total current at a junction is zero. The total current at a junction sums out to be zero. Now, when I say total current, now obviously here in this figure I cannot say I one plus I two plus I three is zero. The reason is obviously these are currents; they cannot be negative. So I cannot say I one plus I two plus I three is equal to zero. What basically this means is there are some sign conventions which you need to follow over here. And what are those sign conventions? The sign conventions are like this: that the incoming current, the incoming current, is taken as positive, whereas the outgoing current. is taken as negative so according to these conventions if you apply these conventions over here i1 is incoming i2 is incoming and i3 is leaving the junction p so if i apply the junction law it will become i1 plus i2 they both are positive why because they both are incoming minus i3 why there is negative because this is the outgoing current So I one plus I two minus I three sums up to be zero, which can also be written like this: I one plus I two equals to I three. I one plus I two equals to I three, which means that incoming current is equal to outgoing current. so the total incoming current at a junction must be equal to the total outgoing current i'll take one example to illustrate it in a better way so remember the basic rule again i repeat whatever is the current entering a junction whatever is the current coming into a junction or coming toward the junction will be equal to the current leaving the junction let us take an example suppose you have a circuit like this this is some resistance this is another some resistance this is again some resistance and maybe this is another one and so on we have various resistors let us say now you can see there are so many junctions in this diagram we have like one over here one over here one over here one over here so there are four junctions as you can see let us suppose that current from here and from here suppose from this side the current of 3 ampere is entering from this side the current of let us say 2 ampere is entering 
I want you to answer me what is I1. We have to find this I1. Let us say that over here in this arm, the current is say 1 ampere. From this side, let us suppose a current of 7 ampere is coming. And I want you to answer what is this I2. So you have to tell me I1, you have to tell me I2. Let's suppose this is 1, this is 7. Suppose from this side, a current of 5 ampere is coming. This one is, let us say, 3 ampere. Then I want you to answer what will be I3. Plus, I want you to answer what is I4. So these are the things that you have to calculate. So it is a problem based on Kirchhoff's. So it is a problem based on Kirchhoff's junction law. So there are four junctions over here, P, Q, R and S. So I have named them P, Q, R and S. Now, if you look very carefully at a junction S, so if you look very carefully at a junction S, what do you see? 3 ampere and 2 ampere, both are coming towards S. So 3 ampere and 2 ampere, both are coming towards S. I1 is leaving S. If you look very carefully, I1 is outgoing. 1 ampere is also outgoing. So according to the junction law, which is the sum of currents has to be 0. Remember again the conventions, incoming positive and outgoing negative. So at junction S, you can say 3 plus 2 minus I1 and minus 1 has to be 0. Incoming is 3 and 2. 5 ampere is incoming. So how much will go away? That will also be 5. So if 5 is incoming, 5 must go away. In this sum, 1 ampere current flows. So what should be I1? So you can just solve this equation. 5 minus 1, which is 4 minus I1 is 0. So the answer for I1 is 4 ampere. So I hope you are able to understand. It's very easy. Let's talk about a junction R then. So now you know that I1 is 4 ampere. We have just solved it out. So I1 is 4 ampere. Now let us talk about, about the junction R. Now at R, 1 is incoming, 7 is incoming, 3 is again incoming and which one is outgoing? I2. So at R, 1 is incoming plus 3 is also incoming plus 7 is also incoming but I2 is outgoing so it will be minus equals to 0. So what will be I2? So I2 will be 1 plus 3, 4 and 7 is 11 ampere. So we have solved this also. So I2 is 11 ampere. Now I'm not going to explain you what will be I3 and I4. That I'm leaving up to, uh, up to you to solve it. So can you just solve it out and let me know what is I3 and what is I4. And one very important thing which you have to remember which is that this law is based on, many times it is asked as a one mark question. This law is based on conservation of charge you know charge is always conserved so what is actually going on that charge whatever charge is coming at a point the same charge has to leave at a point so this law is based on conservation of charge and you must remember this law how to divide current in a circuit so that you can apply the loop law so I hope the things are clear. So the incoming current is positive. The outgoing current is taken as negative. Sum has to be zero or you can take it in the other way, which is that the total incoming current has to be equal to the total outgoing current. Well, hope you enjoyed the video and you have understood this. Thank you so much.